gave you a chat. It's so lovely to see your wee face. How are you? Uh, I'm all right. Thanks for asking me on. It's good oh, to... thank you for being here. What a joy. What a treat. Looking forward to it. It's a pure VIP audience. It's my dream, isn't it? Yeah. Where? Um, Where? Here, here, <laughs> here, 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 here. <laughs> <laughs> because we like you. There's no, it's no secret to you that I um, I'm a bit of a fan, <laughs> fan girl of yours, yeah. and this is why I'm, I'm interviewing all my my pals. I mean, I'm lucky now I can call you my pal, but it certainly began with me being a bit of a fan girl, and mm. I, and I'm interviewing loads of people in my life from my industry and other industries who inspire me and who I've got loads of respect for. So that's why I went to, to chat to you. And they couldn't make it the day, so you asked me. And they were they were busy, so I thought, oh, I'll just get Johnny Mac on. He'll do it. <laughs> um, but no, because, I mean, uh, uh, most people will know you, probably currently will know you as the leading man of the King's Theatre Glasgow. I mean, you know, you're the, le you're, the, you're the leading man of the Glasgow Kings, which is like, just amazing, isn't it? So most people know you from there, but I first, I first saw you actually on the other side of the city in the Pavilion Theatre, Glasgow, and I had never, and I'm quite ashamed to say it, I'm, I had never heard of Johnny Mac, right? I was watching Pinocchio and you were playing Jim the Cricket, and I was like, I was with lovely Gary Lamont, who you know, oh, who you worked with, Gary. and I was like, ah, God, he's quiet, I'm like, who <laughs> is he? Who is he? That's Johnny Mac. Who? He's like, oh, never mind. But I'm not even trying to start telling you yes. Oh, and I, I just you. thought you were so wonderful, and that was it. I was instantly hooked by your performance. So you I think you. most people know you from there, eh? Can you be my agent? I'll be your agent any day, pal. I'll get your hands of work. I could sell you forever. <laughs> he does this, 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 and that. He's really good at that. Don't ask him to do that. He does the like. I tried uh, it. <laughs> But yeah, so you work obviously primarily in live theatre across the UK. So I used to. Um, yeah, I'm just wondering how you're feeling. You know, there's a lot of uncertainty about that side of our industry, and that's your, that's where you are all the time. So I imagine it must be quite a stressful time for you. Is it how are you coping? Yeah, I'm. I mean, I obviously understand that there's kind of bigger problems than me performing in live theatre as you say but overnight um well like all, most of my pals the work just dried up i had a really busy 2020 planned and did you did you have loads of nice things lined up yeah, yeah and oh, literally just wiped out um so um yeah it's a kind of really strange time and especially i mean the the, the thing that i'm kind of we're all in it together and it's not, you know, kind of as the world as well, you know. So I've, everything stopped. Um, so I think it'll be when, you know, if this phasing comes back of seeing other industries go back and I guess we'll be last and how it's going to work. And um, certainly over this last week of seeing that, that picture of the theatre in Germany where it was like a thousand seater and they were doing social distancing and there was... It, you know, there was like a hundred people sat there, and it was just so yeah. and then and that yeah. that kind of gave me the the fear. Um, must yeah, have, a summer sort of going. This is how is this going to yeah itself, and how are we going to get back to work, and how are we going to be supported? Um, so yeah, but you know, as long as people, I mean, that's the thing. We've got to get this under control, this virus under control, and make sure that friends, family. I mean, I think the kind of um, friendships and uh, kind of family bonds have become stronger. So I've come and enjoying that side of it. Um, yeah. My mortgage company isn't, but I am. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, We're all like that. <laughs> uh, yeah. What? I yeah. think uh, I think for me, one of the big moments was the West End closing, and then that was you know a way back. And now what we've seen is things like frozen on Broadway saying that it won't reopen and that for me when you go you've got a Disney production on Broadway one of the biggest franchises in the world saying we can't really open back up that's yeah. the kind of thing that makes me go because <gasps> if they if they are kind of forecasting that that's what makes me really nervous about it you know 
Yeah, and I, I feel sorry for producers. Um, Me too. They put on, you know, and it was kind of, I was, I, I do, uh, I work in the, the Hippodrome down in Great Yarmouth. And yeah. Had, years and before that went into lockdown, um, like the first kind of um, advice was, you know, when the Prime Minister was like, oh, don't, don't go to theatres, don't go to pubs, don't go to clubs, but it wasn't enforced. So then it really puts the yeah. it on the producer and we were kind of ready, to, we were just about to go into rehearsals for the Easter show, which is kind of seven weeks, um, which is people, uh, acts from all over the world with a little pirate story. Um, but then, so then the pressure is to the producer or, you know, one, you're, it's not stopped. So you can open, but then you're kind of relying on the public to go, Shh, do I feel safe enough to go? So are people going to buy tickets? Are, you know, so there's no, there was no kind of backup. Um, so they, they decided not to go ahead with it just for, for health and safety. Um, yeah, which is a real credit to, to, you really see, uh, it's a real credit to people's work ethic and their morals all kind of combining, isn't it? Because you go, we can see who really is caring fundamentally about right. what's right, and because well, that's a real for for to be getting advice, uh, you know, advised by the government. It's not safe to do this, but then we're not going to help these industries. So it's mm -hmm. kind of like, well, what am I supposed to do? I'm not going to be able to pay my pay my people or my contractors or my yeah. employees, but also people are being advised not to come. It was a real bit of a mixed message. I think at first it was very difficult for. And I think that's going to have caused a lot of the problems, actually, in the first instance, don't you? Yeah, definitely. I'm really curious, right? Because when I watch you on stage, I, I watch you, you do many different things. You do pantomime, you do stand-up, you do um, Francie and Josie with lovely Liam Dolan. Um, you do a real variety. You do Pirates Down in the Hippodrome. You're a real classic variety performer, right? And you've got a real youthful energy. You know, you put everything into it, your performance. I think you would be described as youthful, energetic, high energy, you know. But then at the same time you go, but you must have a really old soul because I feel like the choices you make and the kind of genre that you love is a real classic, traditional genre. Yeah. And I just wondered, where, like, where does that come from? Has that always been your inspiration or did you find yourself just falling into it naturally or like how did that start for you? Hey, I think it was organic uh, but then I kind of grew up uh, with uh, my mum and dad taking me to the uh, pantomime and summer shows and uh, my gran lived with us for about 15 years. Really? So, uh, and then she used to, what we used to watch Francie and Josie, so that's where the kind of love of that came from. Oh, that's um, lovely. And, you know, kind of, my mum and dad are not in the business at all, but are kind of always kind of laughing and joking, or, you know, my dad's telling jokes, or etc. So I think that's where that came from. And then I remember, I did an interview before, I think it was, yeah, I think I did a, an interview at Christmas there about pantomime. They're like, so how did you, why did you kind of go? But my birthday's on the 29th of December. Yeah, because um, we my, used to celebrate it and Pantwell loved that. We did, and my, but my <laughs> birthday treat when I was growing up was always uh, to come up to Glasgow and go to the pantomime and it was always like a surprise. So, and I think maybe that, because I remember... Oh, that's I right, it, yeah. Must, it, I think, you know, a really happy time in my life or like an annual thing was always like, oh, it's my birthday, oh, I get to go to the pantomime. So I think that's yeah. where that came from. And then um, meeting uh, Liam, who I do Francie and Josie with, yeah. um, at Youth Theatre, and we both liked uh, the same kind of uh, genre of variety theatre, you know, when uh, the Gaty used to do the Gaty Whirl, yeah. um, and uh, Blackpool, we'd go and see the stuff in the pier or go down to the Pleasure Beach and see uh, Paul Zerd and Bradley Walsh, uh, Barrymore, all these kind of kind of shows. Um, so I guess that's where that was kind of instilled in, as you say, it's kind of that classic uh, kind of comedy stuff that I like. Yeah, 
What do you think it is about variety that you love? I, what I love is uh, as in variety, like you know, when the the Gaty Whirl or kind of a, a kind of summer season show where you get everything. The, I guess the glitz and the glamour, but you know, you're guaranteed a really good night out, and it's all and it's you know you've got kind of songs that you love, uh, a, a special act, and then you know a good fifteen minutes of comedy. So you kind of get everything in it. You know the. TV tries to reinvent itself with uh, the BGT, you know, basically yeah. is, is, I guess, is kind of helped to re-energise that kind of genre. But I mean, all the, all the kind of acts now go on there and do a little bit. And, yeah, but, yeah. it's the ideal. It's the ideal place for families to go and yeah. enjoy theatre yeah. together, yeah. isn't it? It's kind of kind of pantomime, you know, yeah. Without the and we, we've chatted about this before. We are very similar in in our love for pantomime, in that we approach it seriously. <laughs> like we really do. We're like, it's really important. Everyone's yeah. got to be right. And I think there's a real sense of responsibility, knowing that we as young children went and it's the, our first experience of the theatre, and we know. That out there, even if you're doing 80 shows in a run, which we have done. <laughs> yes, we have. Yes. Oh, yes, yes we have. <laughs> but I would literally, I would literally do it all year round. Like I can. I know. You know. I know. It's. Uh, I know. I'm probably the only one. The only one in January who's like got the panto blue. The thing is, I said this to you before. Look, Johnny, get all code. Oh, sorry. I can't see that there. Hi. Um, well, hi. <laughs> see if we were on stage, would have been like that. Who's that? Who's that? <laughs> right there, right there, right there. Right there, that's the right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. Um, what was I talking about? Panto, yes. So I saw you as Jim the Cricket and I thought you were incredible, right? And I was like totally blown away. I thought that you were really unique, especially for your age and your delivery and the just the way you approach it and the kind of command you had for the stage and all that. I'd said that to you and you're so modest. You were like, I'm like, it was all coming out. I'm like, oh my God, and this and that. And you were like, yeah. Can we talk about something else? <laughs> but remember, because you are so lovely and kind that you kind of, you're like, oh, you don't really know how to take I suppose we're all like that. And then when I, when I got the opportunity to work with you for the first time, do you know what's really funny? When I was researching, so research my interviews, I was like, God, me and Johnny have actually they worked together twice, and I feel like I feel like I've worked with you loads more because we did such huge long runs, like eighty odd show runs, mm -hmm. and it's like I remember the first time going to do Pant was really excited, and you were playing my beloved Peck the Parrot, who's always been my favourite. Yeah. yeah. Actually, then getting to watch you from the other side and watch you in the wings and watching your journey and watching how you are in the theatre and all these things that come with being like a leading man of pantomime. And I, I said this to you at the end of the run, and you were like, "Stop giving me up your beamer." But I was like, "You really, you 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 come out the traps like that. You set the bar. You used to open every show, and you used to set the bar so high for the cast, the ensemble cast, and the pressure, the the pressure was on because you used to, and you never falter. The content you have in the shows that you do." They get our money's worth, don't you, pal? <laughs> <laughs> like, you're never off the stage. And yeah. there's never a moment where you sit back or you can see that you look tired. And I've even seen you performing with an injury to your back, remember, at the Armadillo. Yeah, yeah, and I yeah. never knew. Yeah, I yeah. never knew. And you told me after, and I was like, mm -hmm. I can't believe you were doing summer songs and everything. And I yeah. just think that's an amazing thing about you, that this is the point of these interviews, is that people don't know loads of things about you, you know? And that's one thing about you, is that you and everyone will say that who works with you, you, like, set the bar so high and you don't ever falter. And you work incredibly hard. It's not easy. You make it look so easy and so fun. But I also feel that, yeah, I mean, that's the thing that the, the audience uh, deserve you know, even in the 80 shows, I mean, as I've said uh, on record, I would let, if, if the theatres would take pantomime 52 weeks of the year, I'd be there. Um, but for that short period of time is that, you know, and the, the, the audience will only maybe see you once a year. So yeah, you don't, you don't want to shortchange them, especially when, totally. you're, when, you, when you're at 
like the Pavilion, the Kings, the SECC, the Kings of Edinburgh, or, or, or yeah, whatever you're doing, panting, the, the audience deserve a hundred percent. Even if, even as you say, even if you're not saying, if you're not feeling a hundred percent, they still deserve to get that. And uh, and that's kind of why. I mean, the, the energy things kind of nerves as well. So mm. <laughs> um, I, that was one thing I was surprised though, and I hope you don't mind me telling your secrets. But before you first we first open, especially when you've got a very short rehearsal period, and you often have a huge chunk when you first come on, as most comics and leads do, they'll have a big monologue. I love to watch your when you admire somebody on stage and then you work with them and you watch how they work. And I remember seeing that, that kind of nervous energy. And I thought, God, I wonder if he feels like a sense of responsibility. I was wondering that about particularly moving over after you moved to Kudos when the, the, the gods of the pantosphere came for you. Like that must have been a moment for you in your career. Like, did you feel nervous or the responsibility of going to the Kings following people like the late, amazing Jared Kelly people like that did you how did you feel did you feel nervous excited yeah yeah I, well that's the thing I I've never thought in a million years that I would get to do the Kings really um, because it was run by another company um and I've been so I did, I did two years at uh, the Kings Edinburgh and then five years at the Pavilion and then I was in touch uh, with Michael Harrison from Kudos throughout of just um, of kind of working for him before. So um, and then yeah, when they said uh, approached me to do the SECC, I was like, oh wow! And yeah, and, you know, and and as performers, you know, that when you suddenly go, oh wow! And it's oh, it's three thousand people. What no. so, I, 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 a day? Oh no, no, a per show. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah, but they, and the great thing is that they give you, they give you so much help. You know, the, the the script is so tight. You've got flying carpets, and you know the production behind you. So yeah, yeah. So again, there's a massive responsibility of don't get found out. So you've got to bring your A game. Um, that would never happen, Johnny then, Mac. Well, but then and then so when and then when we finished. Um, the, the SECC, I was kind of going, oh, I hope I'll get asked back, hope I get asked back. And then I, then he phoned and said, um, uh, I don't think, I don't think um, you're going to the SECC. And I was like, oh no, oh. blown it. And he was like, I've got somewhere else for you. And I was like, all oh, right. He was like, are oh, the Kings? And I was like, Edinburgh? I'm going back to Edinburgh. And he was like, oh, Kings Glasgow, we're, we're, get, we're taking the Kings Glasgow. And I was like, so I'm just going to vomit here. Hang on. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, and then, so, I mean, to be there is brilliant, actually. It's iconic, Johnny, eh? That's yeah, like, yeah. I mean, I, we're... Yeah, I was trying to do uh, about, when I, yeah, how many years before I went? About five years before I went, I actually did, I tell, I've been reading The Secret and, like, trying positive... Yeah. Uh, uh, ...vision, and, and uh, my wife said, oh, you should do a vision board. And I swear, I don't have it to hand, but I swear that everything I put on that board came true, or I got. And I don't know why, but I'd put a cut out of the King's Glasgow on there, because that's where I'd wanted to play. So, I mean, I was never a massive believer in it, but it has happened, and I'm so yes. grateful for it. So, yeah, I mean, it's sort of, what a place, what a... What a venue, and as you say, like to follow in the footsteps of Ricky Fulton, Stanley Baxter, Jared Kelly, uh, to work with Elaine. I mean, it's, you know, it's I, I, I kind of still I'm there. That's this is my third year, so uh, or fourth year coming up now. But it's kind of pinch myself every day, and I'm, I, I know I get to walk to work, so because I live kind of close. Yeah. So by you know, as the crow flies, it's my closest theatre. And I'm five minutes from the house. I'm I'm working there, and you know, as you say, the production values are awesome. The the best, I, I think, and you know, they 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 look after you. The show's good. There's it's really talented people around you. So yeah, you do. You just have to try, as you say, try and bring your best every show. Yeah, you don't want to let anyone else down. I think you've, you're at home there for sure. And it's funny because you kind of feel like you're like 
I was really surprised when Kudos came calling, but I think every other actor who works in pantomime in Scotland were like, why is Kudos no phone down? <laughs> I mean, everybody was like, why is he not being blocked by a big crane like that? Because if I was a pantomime producer, I'd be like, put him here, do you know what I mean? Because they are not, not to uh, belittle the pavilion in any way. I mean, it's a great, we've, we've spent so many days there, but the... Does that, the audience are super. Oh, a great five years there. They a, are, a and they, and a lot of them probably come and see both now because they like to come and see you as well, you know. And of course, beautiful Liam's there, who's your partner in crime. Yes. So he kind of stepped into your shoes, which is lovely because there's a, there's a you know a majesty about um, Kudos. It kind of feels to me like the top of the the top of the game for Panto. So it's kind of a natural progression. And then you've got Liam, who was the the star of Kilmarnock Palace for a long, long time, where he's from. And then it was nice because as you stepped out of the pavilion, and he he then he he stepped in, and that's a really nice thing because it means that someone else has had getting a shot at playing this big, huge house with, like you said, there's nothing like I mean, there's nothing like a king's audience. Nothing like a pavilion audience. They're no, too no, no, slightly no, different, no, you know. No, but they're it's a Glasgow. I mean, probably <coughs> sort of slightly biased of being from the west coast. But that again, working away so much of the year, being home at Christmas, like a, a Glasgow pantomime audience. Yeah. Like when it's rocking and you're like, it's it's a Tuesday afternoon, and it's I know like, you, you go out there in the first five minutes, and it's like yeah, you get slapped. In, you get slapped in the face by the laughs, and you're like. Yeah, but this is why I, this is why I love it. You know, this is why you do like sacrifice the stuff. Yeah, Christmas. So I yeah, think yeah. The, I mean, the Glasgow audience, if they love you, they absolutely love you. You know, and if, you're, if they don't like you, they'll let you know. <laughs> and, and that's what you, that's you know that's what I love, and that's why I'm so passionate about it. And you know, as yeah, want to be there for the next however many years. But yeah. um, I'm just I, I love it. I tell this to anyone visiting, anyone that will message and say, I'm coming to Glasgow, you know, I've heard they're a, they're a bit scary. And I'm like, no, the, the, the thing about a Glasgow house is they want you to do well. Yeah. They, they really want to be yeah. entertained. There's not a lot of judgment in a kind of mainstream Glasgow Scottish house, the Scottish yeah. audiences, you know, and that's a nice feeling when you when you know that they're excited and that's what you get in pantomime, the excitement, isn't it? Yeah, then that is exactly what you said. They want you to do well. Um, I brought my pal Jack, who I worked with at the Hippodrome up maybe about 10 years ago. And we went to see the pantomime at the pavilion. And he was just like, when he came out, he was like, I've never heard that kind of audience reaction. He's like, and, yeah. also, and also as well, that the people in the audience think that the actor is only talking to them. And I the, love that. The audience member is only talking to, so they think that it's him and the baddie and yeah. they're just having a conversation. Yeah. And he's like, there's people just like talking at the. the when that's, like, a brilliant, like, that's a really and it, brilliant and it, and point. I was like, yeah, yeah, but he was like, it's amazing. Like, it was like, they love You know what? Point. I've never ever thought, I remember when I did Maggie, like my first ever commercial one woman was at the pavilion and I was terrified. It's a 1500 seater. Very close, as you know, it's a variety theatre. You know, the night. Did you? I remember. The, the fire alarm went off as well. That's what I first met you when you and came I out. And I did 27 minutes onto the show because I'd never done my yeah. own. And I was like, the audience were laughing so much. My director was like, I did 27 minutes onto the show. <laughs> it's it's Keep going. Keep it Oh, in. mate, I just didn't know how to. I was like, oh, <laughs> I was just so gobsmacked, but that's something I remember specifically with the the pavilion house. Is he in the front row, or she's got a letter, or he's done that, like narrating the thing? Or I know him, I know, like responding to you. They're totally with you. I want to show you. I've got a couple of new videos actually that are a cheeky couple of screen grabs together, and it's just a nice wee clip of the house, and it's you and it's actually Stephen Purden. You can see because he's in the house. Remember the. Um, oh, the 12 days of Christmas. Yes. That sometimes took 12 days when you were off the stage waiting for I, you to yeah, finish. I did 27 minutes every night. We'd be in the wings like that. Guys, <laughs> <laughs> we want to get into the microwave queue. <laughs> right, hold on. This is a wee family, actually. I'll credit them in this. Yeah, I'm 
talking about watching their faces it's not just the kids you can see every adult face beaming mm. and all the re that you and Stephen were actually a joy together eh mate mate I can't help you stand up or sit <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know no I love that and, and we, end, we shared a dressing room for the, the five years and yeah he was brilliant he's guy great yeah. and, just, and for comedy stuff as well you know it, he's, he's, he's great he's like he is I mean, what do you want me to say? What do you want me to do? Well, just do that. Aye, mate, great. And then away we go. But, we, but <laughs> I, think, I think when you've got that relationship off stage, it kind of helps when you're on stage as well. Um, yeah. You and Greg get on so well. Yeah. You know, so then when, when you know, and it's, and, and kind of lucky enough, like now with Elaine, you know, there's a, a shortcut for gags or, you know, it doesn't take a day to rehearse it. You just be like, yeah. you say that and I'll say that. You know, it's like my pal. What's Jack. that like? What's that like when you go like, so we, we're talking, you're talking about the legendary Elaine C. Smith. To you, she's Elaine, who you work with every year. What's that? Is that mental for you? Or has it become normal? Or it, it's, it's mental to, <laughs> when, I, when you stop and think about it. But actually, when I'm texting or on the phone to her or, in rehearsals or then it's just it's normal and she's so lovely like I can't you know she just wants everyone to do well and she wants to help people up you know where, yeah. where you, you, you meet and work with other people that just want to keep you down yes or, or not you know or not let you be funny you know and kind of could 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 easily finish you know if i went in the first year at the kings and she decided oh no it's not you're not you're not for me or you know or just you know oh don't say that and don't do that but on the first year i remember a read through the first read through um and as you say you do your opening spot and i was sat and i read the thing and she was belly laughing and clapping and that's brilliant yes. that will work that is brilliant that work and i was kind of like this hasn't happened this doesn't happen at a read through and i'm like Oh, and you know that whole f two weeks and as as, as a comic like I find you know not being a, a proper actor I find rehearsals really difficult I find it difficult to get the timing get the get the the energy because you're basically performing to the director in a chair and a wall you know and once you've done it three or four times then and, and then in your head you, you, you kind of feel the other actors waiting to come on for a scene and going they'll just want to get on with us and I don't you know so it's like it's funny that you feel that way isn't it but they're totally not they're, they're like no, no, they're no, it's only but, it's in your head, but by the time you get yeah. to, by the time you get to tech it's like, <laughs> um, you're like oh this is a year or that they're not, I'm not going to get yeah. out. they hate me they don't want me but you know but that whole that first year at the kings and, and every year but you know you can be standing on the floor to do a scene if you know if elaine and i are doing us or something and she'll be like oh yeah that's funny but i don't think i would say that you take the funny and you're like Wait, what who does, yeah who does that but you know when you, you don't you know elaine doesn't need to do it. she doesn't the great thing is, is she's always said it's stuck in my head you know some well you know people do pantomime because they they need to do pantomime she doesn't need to do pantomime she chooses to do it so yeah. and that's the i think the sign of a, a proper star and also that's obvious you can eat i mean you, you know she, yeah she just she's brilliant really a, a lot what? of funny work What's really lovely about that is I actually chatted to Elaine for this and I was showing her some pictures that I'd grabbed quickly but we were going to, I was going to do a montage at the end and you know what she actually did? She was like, oh, oh, there's what, oh, but there's one of the, me and Johnny with that. And I was like, I know, I know. And she's like, no, no. And I showed her another one. She was, yeah, but I'm sure there's one of me and Johnny with that as well. And I was like, I can't believe this legend mm. is concerned about making sure that the other half on stage I was like yeah. and she and this is what we chatted about I mean she is a champion of 
of everybody, particularly of women, champion women, championing women, which is sometimes a bit lacking. There's a lot of, um, you know, it's, it's a competitive industry and there's only so many places for so many people. And particularly women in comedy, it's very difficult because we don't have, the, you know, it's, a, it's an ongoing battle that's getting better. But so to have another female who's there, a way above you, putting her hand down and doing that. Yeah. And I'd said to her, and she said, well, it costs nothing to be kind. And she was so lovely as well. She said that she, she said she, she does need champion everyone. She says she champions the nice, good people, you know. Yeah. So I think that that's credit to you, that she's, that says everything about your work and who you are as a, a person as well. Because she she's, looks after the good people, the people that are kind and very good at their job as well. She's also, she also like in the rehearsal room for everyone, you know, kind of, principal boys and girls or you know if they're not you know, it should you know she'll stop and be like no they need to be there needs to be a wee scene of them doing something here or you know that doesn't be you know and like you say she puts her, her hand in and, and, and brings people up and wants yeah. people to, to be uh, really good in the show because and you know and that's the, that if you find that with the with the really talented people that that's the best way to work, you know. If you if you kind of cut everyone off or try to kind of keep people down, it doesn't you know look very good. But honestly, she's amazing. I can't. She has people speak. I said that to her. I said people that work with you speak so highly of you. And there's things that people don't know that, like I said to her as well. And she's again, everybody's so modest and kind. And I was like, you know, everybody in the industry knows that she's she's very generous. So take people for meals, company meals and things, and you're just like, my God, she doesn't need to do that. Like, the things my that God. she'll do... I'll dress, huh? I'll dress it. When she moves into the Kings for the start of the panto, honestly, you can't get in the room for presents and every single person... I mean, every show she'll have, I don't know, eight, ten people that'll come back, and every single person gets a gets a present. I mean, you can't mm. move. I mean, come, like, the 3rd of January, you can at least get in and have a conversation. But honestly, <laughs> the whole room is like... And it's sort of here's a wee thing for you and on yeah. for you and you know. She's and great. Part, she's would great. you would you like to is that something you would like to, you know, when you get a wee bit older, you know, when you when you're like there and all the youngins are coming up behind you, do you think that that's kind of the way you'd like to be known, like that that you're kind of you know, she's almost setting the bar for us, isn't she, coming up yeah. uh, up the ranks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that, yeah, and that is, yeah, because you've all, because I've, I've known people being on the other side, you know, that are talented people that don't, you know, have kind of been kept back or not given the, the opportunities. Yeah. And, and yeah, it's definitely learn or have learned to, of that's, that's definitely the way to be. Um, yeah. I've got a wee video of you both. I'll show you it here. We'll play it for everyone. It's just nice. I think it was, I don't know if it was your first King show. Was it Aladdin your first King show? No. Sleeping Beauty. And then so this, in the next. Yeah. So this is your second. So it's a wee advert. I just love it. I love the two of together. And lovely Paul Corrigan's in this advert as well. Oh. It'll show you it. Hold on. Fun day, and also um, the, um, the the people that work with us, Lord, Joan and Michael. Yes. Uh, well, well, are the are the two people sitting in the, the chairs, um, and they look across, and they did it in one take. Did but they? Everyone else. I mean, I, oh. I've kind of the kind of doing camera stuff is a completely different discipline, you know, and trying yes. to tone it down slightly or hitting the mark or uh -huh. whatever you use professionals do, but. Um, <laughs> But uh, then, but yeah, doing that was really fun. And then it took kind of a day 
basically for me, I suppose, um, PJ and uh, Elaine were on it as well. But um, And then the last shot, I think, was Joan and Michael and came down and then sat down and did it. And the director was like, yeah, that's fine, fantastic. <laughs> and I wish we'd got you yes! on. <laughs> and they were like, yes. I but think the whole the whole Scottish theatre world, though, when they saw that advert, using the two icons who have been yeah. on that door, I, I mean, they're, they're at stage door, they're the first people you see when you come in, yeah. the last people you see when you go out. And I remember when I did my, um, I did, I've never played the Kings on my own, with my own show. I played it with 51 Shades of Maggie recently, and it was like a huge moment for me coming in. And I remember Michael came because he knew do you know what I love about them? They just know. Yeah. And he came to the taxi. Came in, he came to the taxi. He had stuff in a taxi because, of course, I was having a drink after that show. Uh, and he, he came to the, the taxi door and my heart was banging, right? I was trying to gather myself. And he opened the door. I didn't expect him. I had all my bags. And he opened the door and he's like, well. And I was like, hi, hey, And he went, all right, doll. And I was like, oh, God. And he went, I knew you'd feel like this. And he just took me in and walked me in. I knew in. Like this. And I knew, I knew he just did it. I knew he... He knew what a big moment it was, and that's how much they care. That's how kind they are, and you, they feel like family to you, don't they? You're like, yeah, imagine exactly. doing that. No, exactly. That's it. Does it's it's uh, it's they they really look after you uh, every every day when you come in. It's you know, there's a, a wee story or a wee something, or you know, or is it all right? my soup up in the microwave yet yeah, or, <laughs> or your mum's dropped this off or you know and, yeah. and that I think again that I love in that about pantomime you know having Elaine there Joan and Michael you know Malcolm uh, you know all I the love people. Malcolm it's like a family isn't it yeah 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 it's, you know, um, every day you know and that's the thing when you when you're lucky enough to go back like a couple of years, you know, it feels, it does, it feels so comfortable and, you know, you can go on with kind of entertaining, but, you know, when you come off, you've got all these people, nice people round about you, it just makes it feel... I was going to ask you about becoming a pirate. I've got a video. <laughs> yeah. I've got a video. Oh, have you? Yeah, this is you, this is you becoming a pirate. <laughs> but I've changed my mind. And anyway, a true pirate should always be ready for any challenge. Right. Okay, well, what do you want me to do? You see that hat. All you have to do is get it, and then you'll be a pirate. <laughs> What did I'm you say it. there? What did you say? I miss it. You said that we were watching it, didn't you? You yeah. sold it. Because like, I, I would be. love it. It looks like such a spectacle. How how did that all come about? The reason that I met um, Jack and his family that own the Hippodrome, they used to, or, or they, do, they did back in the day, um, his grandfather used to own three of the theatres. <laughs> uh, there's me there. Three of the theatres uh, um, in Great Yarmouth, and um, and then they bought the the Hippodrome Circus in 1979, um, and it's just it's a fantastic venue. So much history. Um, you would uh, you would love it. You you should come down and see it. I mean, just oh. you know, um, like that, like just that. that. Yeah. Uh, especially so when, exciting, uh, Johnny. Yeah, and when you go in, there's there's something about being in there there's something magical about being in there and um, but uh yeah so i did um my friends i i, I did a, a a butlins tour for friends of any panto club <laughs> so clive and danny adams um used to work at the hippodrome and i used to go and see it and then they got a big contract with butlins and couldn't do it and I, I, it was again like one of those things i, I kind of oh i'd always like to work there and then um, the family had seen me do the summer season before which wasn't too far away and they were like oh why don't you come and do the summer so again I thought me what do you mean so but yeah I've been there 10 years I think they, they used to have a show at Easter um, and one year they couldn't come 
So then the family started talking, saying, oh, we should do something. Uh, we, we, we'll do a, a, a show. But then didn't want to do it and because Yarmouth is kind of the two, not so many tourists around about Easter holidays. I mean, it's built up over the years, but um, so they did it in the half. So basically they built a big galley and ship at one end and then used the... Uh, the pool is a, a lagoon or whatever with the decking around the front as you can see in that, that video there. So I think we've done six pirate shows. So it's more pantomime. I mean, I, I kind of, between myself and Jack um, and another actor, James, he we, we kind of put the script together with the story. Um, so it's a kind of panto story with panto routines, circus acts. It um, just looks amazing. It is, and, and the, the gear, the kind of lighting uh, yeah. that they spend on it is uh, with the screens and all the stuff they kind of really invest in. I mean, again, talking about lovely people, I, I, that, like that family are like so nice yeah. to, work, to work for. Um, you know, I kind of live in Jack's house about six months of the year, so he gets a, a Scottish lodger. Um, so I stay down there with him um, and... His dad, his dad is uh, from Showbiz. He used to, he, he has had a band, Peter J and the Jaywalkers, supported the Beatles, the Rolling Stones. Oh my God! Uh, especially coming, like, is talking about variety. He's worked with every variety act, any every comic from kind of the eighties, nineties, where I kind of grown up. So I'd be like, oh, what's so and so like? And I need to have a story about that. So you know, they're a really lovely family to work for, and kind of keeping the kind of tradition of circus going, but in a modern kind of way. You know, a lot of some kind of UK circuses kind of get a bad rep um, mm. kind of touring around, but this is like first class entertainment and yeah, I love I love I love working there. It looks incredible. I wanted to ask you about another love that's come from your work. <laughs> I don't know what like, let's have a wee look. So I've got a wee picture of you and somebody Oh, yeah. Okay. I think I don't know if this is you in a show costume or fancy dress. It looks like you're in a wing. I think it is a show costume. Well, is it? I tell you what, my wife Steph will be very happy with that because that's actually a fancy dress. Part. A beautiful picture of a special moment here. <laughs> you can tell me what happened. <laughs> uh, I found out I was pregnant. <laughs> 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 Again? Again. <Stop. laughs> uh, yeah. but you, where did you, uh, what, uh, obviously you met through work, Steph's an, a, an incredible performer, stunning dancer, also a gymnast, she does gymnastics, she, she, you often see her suspended from the ceiling on a bloody rope, she does, she does everything, doesn't she? She's an yeah. incredible performer. Yeah, so she, yes, is exactly how you described you. You are she, punching. I know. Me <laughs> wonder I have to try harder every I'm day. I'm joking, I'm no, joking. No, no, I know. She's great. Um, so, yeah, we've been very lucky. We met we met at the Pavilion, so nine years ago, and then we've been married. Uh, no, 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 wait. You're not getting out of this. So, talk me through this, how a Mr. Mac works, right? The you see gorgeous dancer, right? Yep. You probably would be forgiven for saying you're actually quite shy when it comes to, you know, real life. I so I it. am interested to know <laughs> look at your wee face. Don't ask me, don't ask me. How did you how did you how did you approach that? Like we used to whisper in the stairs and joke and go like that. When you and Steph were actually like a couple, I used to go, He fancies you, we used to all <laughs> laugh and and I was like, but did it happen like that? Was it like, or were people quite mature about it or not? <laughs> Me, mature? I know, mature. that's why I want you know. Uh, no, no, actually, well, I, no, it was, it was kind of a, it was, a, it was like a slow burn. Because um, I thought she was with someone else. I thought she was can with... Can you remember her. when you first saw her? Can you remember, yeah. like, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. can you? And what yeah. did you, what did you, <laughs> what did you think? <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, know, I, I remember. I remember. I remember the first day seeing her, and um, when we, we were in for a press shoot. But then again, there was. But then I was with kind of um, my my friends, Kat, James, and all that. So we it was kind of we were kind of in a group or whatever. So there was yeah. 
Um, <coughs> have that. And then over rehearsals and then the first couple of weeks of the show. But then I just thought she was with, I thought she was with uh, one of the other boys, but she's just, that's just a really good pal. But again, yeah. there's no like kind of conversation of oh, what's this set up or, you know, because we uh-huh. don't. And then as we got to know each other and the, the, the cast, then I was like, oh, right, okay. So she's. Because she, I've asked her about this, you know, and I'm like, what, well, you know, and she's like, I was totally like, I just loved them. And she said when I, you know, she thinks she thought you were really handsome and everything, but she also was like, she just, she loved guide, everything about guide, you. As well. What? Our guide dog thought that as well. <laughs> <laughs> I just love the fact that sometimes you can be kind of looking at someone from afar thinking, that'll never, that'll, I'll never, you know, they'll never be interested in me. And you both kind of thought that. Hi. Hi. Oh, it's so lovely though. And obviously you are so happily married. What year did you get married then again? 2017. Did Luke. I get a point for that? Is that? Well done, Steph. Steph, look at that. I mean, I've got another picture of you. We college that I think Steph had made one year of your wedding. Oh, oh look, yeah. look at you both. What a beautiful day. You get to work together quite a bit, don't you? Yeah. So uh, again, lucky because of Steph's gymnast background. So I was already working at the Hippodrome, but which is Brenda doesn't know eight hours from Glasgow, so by driving, so it's not just round the corner and working yeah. seven days a week over the summer period. You start the first of July, finish the fifteenth of September. Wow! And I'm not saying that uh, obviously you know long distance relationships do work, can work, but kind of puts a lot of strain on. So yeah, the, the great thing was that Jack and the family saw the pa- we saw the pantomime actually Peter Pan. Where we'd met and it was like, oh, if Steph wants to come and dance, she can come and, you know, you know, dance and Brilliant. and then uh so that was great as well. So then we could spend kind of fifteen weeks together and not separate, you know, of her coming up and down. Get a wee thing, uh, that started yeah. up in Panto when you first sent me we like to send each other naughty pictures, don't we, Johnny? <laughs> just tell everyone, let's just get it out in the open, right? Yeah. Me and Johnny Mac send each other dirty, filthy, <laughs> naughty photos. Aye, the worst kind. And I look at them for ages, see me yeah. sending them, I look at every single bit oh, of it, wow. salvating, wishing yeah. it could be mine. <laughs> yes, of course, pictures of Chinese takeaway. Uh, uh, <laughs> Sometimes our partners join in and it's just the best. We're very, we're very open. <laughs> Oh, it's great. It's like, we, we started it in pantomime, didn't we? And it's because I've got this absolute enthusiasm I have for food. Oh, I know I mean, you'd never think it, looking at me, but I'm like, oh my God! Well, we just love it, don't we? And you guys, you guys know how to order a good takeaway. I know. I that's how we think. We had the conversation one day of what we were ordering, you were like, you do not order that. And I, was like, I couldn't believe it, because you're both so fit. And... I was like, there's no way you eat all that. And you're like, mate. And I was like, I want the before and after. And you went, mate. Uh, and I was like, oh, uh, oh my oh, God. Is there. You're amazing at it. Uh, we, <laughs> we did it first, I think, when I was uh, 17 and Liam was 19. So that wasn't yesterday. But we were going to the Edinburgh Festival with the Youth Theatre. And every day I had to pay £250 to to go and for the accommodation or for the show or whatever and we couldn't afford this so it was like oh well why don't we do a show and raise money so um so we put together a double act me and him yeah. are both fans of uh, francie and josie and said well why don't we do a kind of 10 minute bit of yeah and, you know people like that and uh, and we also had a contact with Poppy Wells at Air, which were costume and attached to the gate, uh, costume people, and they had original Francie and Joseph suits. So we're like, oh, we could get them. So we wrote to Ricky Fulton and Jack Mulroy and said, can we... Uh, What's her we mic, Johnny? Oh, sorry. Have you got a... No, sorry. <laughs> I think I've got any trouble. Johnny! No, it's just, it's just... Um, uh, I want people to hear you. Sorry. I, I said... Uh, so yes, so we we got the costumes. Then we wrote to Ricky and Jack, 
and said, can we perform this material? And they wrote back and said, uh, Ricky wrote back and said, yes, as long as you uh, stick to the original script and credit the writer and don't deviate in any way. But remember... That's incredible. But remember, it's not just about standing on stage and saying the words. So like, all right, okay. So we, so wow. then, so, so we did that and filmed it. And then we sent the, the VHS tape, that's how long ago it was, to... Uh, Ricky and Jack, and we get letters back and said, Johnny, did you? Did you? Oh my God, I didn't know this. Yeah, we've still got the letters. Yeah, we've got the letters from. Oh my God. Yeah, uh, so, which is amazing. Um, so we said, oh, uh, they said, oh, the, the sound quality is, you know, is not the best, of course, because it's for the back of our feet on the centre, but um, it's, it sounds like the audience loved it. You, the mannerisms were great. Um, best of luck in the future. Oh, wow. Dutch. So, so then fast forward however many years, a night socially over a couple of bottles of wine. Like, wouldn't it be great to do Francine Jose again? I'm like, I'll do it. I'll be there. I'm doing it. I'll be there. But, right. So, so then, uh, so then sober up and say, oh well, actually that might be a nice surprise for people that know us as pals and you know, yeah, theatre and back at the palace and etc. Uh, so. We decided we're going to do it, so we decided to contact uh, Mary Lee, so um, Jack's wife, um, uh -huh. and invite her to come along and say, oh, we're going to do Francine Josie, uh, make sure that that would be all right, there we're there. Mm -hmm. um, so, I so sorry, we'd, so we then invited Mary Lee, so she came to the palace in Command, like, saw, saw us do the routine, and then came backstage, we got pictures with her backstage, and she said, uh, this should be on tour, you should be doing a tour of it. Um, of wow. And then, and my mum, to her eternal credit, probably from the, the, the day that we, we did the first fancy Josie, she kept saying, there's an audience out there, people will want to see this, you should be doing this, this is good variety, and etc. So, again, so we chatted about it and said, okay, well, why don't we put a fancy Josie show together and put it out? So we did that, um, and we did, I don't know, eight in venues and it sold out and then we did the pavilion and yeah so we've been doing that for four or five years maybe also as well we got the rights to do uh, i am jolly yes look i've got a picture this is really amazing actually so here's ricky right the legend i mean the oh, absolute yeah. legend right yeah and uh, there's, uh, there's ricky fantastic and then Here's you. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just iconic, isn't it? Oh, what was the, that like? Because I've never seen you do that. The, the, the amazing thing, Leah, is when the chair, when we, when the chair comes on, when we get, when the light comes up on the chair, mm -hmm. the chair gets a round of applause. Yeah, I bet, I bet. It's like, hairs in the back of your neck stand up. Like, every, uh -huh, every uh -huh. way, you know, uh, um, all the shows are good. Can you do a wee bit? Can you do a wee bit for us? I've never seen you no. doing it. Is that too much? No, no, no. I'll do. I'll, I'll do like a line. No. Hello. <laughs> um, but, Sorry, but, I put you on the spot there, but I just like I've never seen you doing that, and that's like it's uh, mind blowing that you. That my you... wee bump just went like that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, 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 it kind of what we were speaking about earlier and my you know pantomime or summer season or on stage uh, persona is high energy 100 miles an hour whereas that's a totally different gear shift um, to do and but i love doing it it's because it's so much slower mm -hmm. no laughing just a monologue, just the odd, it's just, it's, it's, it's magical to do. Comedy can sometimes, there's a bit of snobbery around comedy at times. In comedy, you need to act, you need to have the ability to take on a persona and tell the truth. You've got to set the scene, and yeah. that's what you do so well. And I wonder how you feel about, in the future, is it something you would ever consider doing, doing some drama, doing a more dramatic role, maybe on stage? Uh, yeah, I would love to. Uh... I would love to do some proper, serious... Really? Yeah. TV That'd be lovely show. to see you doing that. I think you'd be very good. Oh, thank you. I think you'd be well, very good, darling. You're my agent now, so of course... Yes! I can't, I, can't be, 
I'm going to be minted. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you feel like you've achieved things that you dreamt of when you were younger? And if you do think that, what would your advice be for any young person who's chasing a dream, particularly a performer? I, I certainly do think I've, I've achieved everything that I've set out uh, so far. Uh, and I feel very fortunate that I've got there. Uh, but as you say, it is, it's not going to happen. I mean, unless you're extremely, extremely lucky, then, uh, you know, it won't happen overnight. So, um, and also as well, is the, the journey. Like, doing it, you know, starting, you know, I started doing uh, the, the social clubs and the holiday parks and the, you know, and if, you know, I mean, to be doing a, a Francine Josie theatre tour was just, you know, not... Kind of not in my wildest dreams did I think I would get that. Yeah. I think I would get the King's Pantomime. I didn't think I'd be the Hippodrome. Um, but, you know, with, with hard work, you've got to go through the hard times to appreciate the good times. Um, but, <laughs> yeah, but when you get there, it makes it even sweeter, you know. Yeah. So it's uh, the advice. I don't know, just do what you love, work hard, you know, try to listen, listen to people that have been there before, listen to, get advice from them, let them help you, um, and yeah, always learning, I'm always learning. Let's finish with some fun um, questions, right, ready? I'm ready. Would you rather be Batman or Spider-Man? Batman. <gasps> do you phone or text? Text. Bath or shower? <laughs> bath, all day long, love a bath. Oh, bath. <laughs> I don't know why that makes me laugh. I pictured you maybe bath cat. No, that one. It's too much. Beer or wine? Wine. Oh <laughs> yes. Wine over wine. Uh, movie or play? Oh. Oh. oh, I knew that'd be a tough one for you. Movie. Um, city or beach? Beach. I know you'd say that. I know we love the beach. Right? <laughs> I know I'm lazy. Uh, would you rather go into the past and meet your ancestors, or go into the future and meet your great great? Grandchildren. Hey. Um, uh -huh. oh, I it's hard, isn't it? That is hard. I think I'll go back and meet my Really? Yeah. Wow. Would you rather win the lottery or live for twice as long? Win the lottery. <laughs> <laughs> Show me the money. <laughs> um, would you rather be the most popular person at work or the smartest? Oh, Johnny Mac. <laughs> You're so adorable. <laughs> You're like, oh, what should I say? <laughs> no, 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 I know. I, I just know how much of a people pleaser I am, and I don't know if I could live with myself. Knowing that I'm smart but every day doesn't like me. Uh, yeah. I want to be popular. I want to be popular. Would you rather every shirt you wear be itchy? Like basically like a woolly jumper, right? You know, that jaggy itchy. Uh, or only ever be able to use one square of single ply toilet roll for life. Like, <laughs> like every time you go to the toilet, you can have one square. Or you need to wear a woolly jaggy jumper. The All the time. Even on the beach in Cancun. Oh no. Is there a is there, is there a bee day or a shower in the in the toilet? No, it's your only mode of uh, cleaning one's bottom. <laughs> oh, I'll have to have the itchy shots then, won't I? <laughs> nice and done for the you. Oh. <laughs> Would you rather have edible spaghetti hair that regrows every night or sweat maple syrup? No, spaghetti. Oh, Me love too. All about the past. Me too. I got that. <laughs> Johnny Mac, you're a pure national treasure. I'm oh. such a fan of you. I'm so grateful for your time. Thank you so much. And I can't wait for you to be back on stage soon. Thank you so much for chatting to me today. Thanks for having me. It's been fantastic. I've loved it. Did you enjoy yourself? I'm enjoying myself. Yay!